Hello there and welcome back to episode 14 of my beginner's tutorial series for Dwarf Fortress. So this one will be quite a special one because we're uh, we're going to start and fix some of our old mistakes because this fortress is in danger. We are above a population of 50 and that means we're we're now we're we're now able to be attacked by by some more bad boys than usual and this this place here has glaring deficiencies all over the place because this is our typical beginner's fortress and uh we really got to work on that or at least die trying because that's the least we can do right so while i was preparing this episode i went over all the things that i have done here so far i've taken a pretty long break between this and the last episode for one it's been uh, the christmas holidays and new year's eve for another thing i wasn't too healthy so i took a lot of time playing the game learning a lot and uh, here we are now with a lot of issues that we're going to fix on up as good as we can so first of all the glaring lack of defenses here bothers me a lot we do have a little bit of uh, traps here, but that's really minuscule. It's only a, a really short trip for any invader to stand right in front of our, of our workshops, or farming workshops and all those things. And that's quite a bad thing overall. Then we have that staircase here, which is basically just a straight drop, which is also really bad in terms of defenses. And uh, a straight drop later, we're in the heart of our, of, our, of our city with all those civilians. And then at least the couple of military dwarfs that we have are close by. I mean, there is one piece of good news in this straight uh, out bad situation. It's also not a sh not a long way for our good guys to arrive at the scene, so we we do have some advantages in this chaos. But uh, altogether, yeah, this is a very typical um, beginner fortress, and uh, this episode I want to dedicate mostly to to fixing up mistakes and expanding ourselves a little bit with a nice service building that we don't have yet, the tavern. So uh, yeah, that's it. Let's get started. So first of all, I wanted to go over a, a very, very typical beginner's mistake that I uh, that I did here. And I wish I would, I could say I did it on purpose, but I didn't. But uh, here's the learning effect. So the the temple and the, this guild hall, there's technically nothing bad about, nothing wrong about them, but they could be much better. So the thing is here, you see the, the zone area here is only covering the floor. It should be something like this though. Because if you're not including the walls to your to your buildings here, like uh, like I did over here, your the value of the building is much lower. Because uh, ironically, your dwarfs really only recognize for the value of a uh, of a zone what's actually inside the zone, and those walls they have value because they're made out of certain stuff. And in this scenario, they're even decorated quite nicely. But uh, the people in the in the guild hall will ignore that unless we do this. So you might ask yourself now, but what about this overlapping wall here? So I'm not 100% sure it could be two things, so I'd be really happy about comments uh, taking this up. So it's either it's a shared wall and it works 50% for this room and 50% for that room, or they, they don't care about that and every room gets the 100% effective wall. But either way, it's worth doing these overlaps. And uh, that's something we, we gotta fix now with all these buildings. Look at that. We're going to increase the value of our city just like that, or at least the perceived value. The thing is, your dwarfs are, uh, they, they are, they really dig uh, shiny, fancy stuff. And the more value a area has, the more they will like it. So it's totally worth doing that. And uh, that's what, what that was one of the most glaring mistakes that happened during the early phase of the game. But I'm actually not regretting this at all because, you know, <clears throat> the more typical mistakes that grew organically into the series, the better. Because this way you guys will find your own mistakes along the lines and, uh, yeah. or be happy that you were smarter than me in the first place. I'm okay with that. Gloat a while if you want to. I don't mind. So 
This is the first thing that we want, that I wanted to do. The second thing that I wanted to emphasize here that this is a uh, this 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 fountain is May. Why? Because it's only one one level deep. So what happens here is the water contains a dusting of mud. This is uh, not exactly a big uh, problem. A dusting of mud is, uh, as far as I know, just so tolerable. We might have been even lucky off due to the uh, aquifer nature of this one but uh, the gist of it is a cistern for a fountain should always be at least two zep levels deep because if you if you have a a, a, a depth level between the water and the the or if if there's a, a depth level between the ground and and the fountain that's more like i wanted to say then then it's okay okay then you're as long as your people are basically not shoveling the water from the ground of the fountain you're okay hope that's a little bit better to explain it but many things in dwarf waters are so abstract that i really struggle with explaining them and the next thing that i wanted to do is i wanted to give our our agriculture a little bit of a push here right now we're uh, we're growing a little bit of these i have really literally no clue where the quarry bushes went I do know that I have a current, but I cannot remember that I ever did mill anything here automatically, but whatever, they are gone. Comments uh, are welcome about where they went, because I really have no clue, but it ain't that much of a problem. We're just going to buy some from a caravan in the future. We are going to grow ourselves some cave wheat here, because that stuff is also really, really useful. And along the lines, plump, hel plump helmets wherever we can. So we have another field here, and I'm going to dedicate that here a little bit to more, oh well, a little bit more pigtails. I want to have as much cloth as uh, I can, and more more of these. This is, uh, this is brutally oversized for our fortress right now, but it's also not that much of a big deal. I rather want to advocate a overproduction of foodstuffs rather than anything else. And we also amped up our cloth, uh, our cloth production. So the next thing that I wanted to fix in this uh, scenario, where, where, where were we, was uh, the soldier situation because I really, really didn't want to go too deep into this before we were really deep into Dwarf Fortress, and a lot of things I had to learn myself. So today I want to fix the mysterious case of non-equipped items. So. Our soldiers here have some items equipped and some are not equipped and uh, we do happen to have a lot of breastplates but they are still not wearing them. So how to fix this? First of all I want to go into the work orders and uh, when we check out our, our work orders here, let's go into them. So what definitely is always a nice fix is just to, to amp up the numbers of these. The moment I didn't care about the numbers anymore, the moment um, the moment came where my military was finally working. So the thing here is, a, a overproduction of armor items is not only uh, solving the equipment problems for you, it's also quite nice whenever you want to, whenever you want to have more soldiers at a, po at a certain point. And I learned another thing, high boots are, 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 are really not good. They are not really compatible with greaves, and they do have a lot of... Uh, equipment schedule problems so I did some digging in the reddit for uh, in the reddit and uh, what I learned was uh, <clears throat> low boots do make way less of an issue when combining I don't know if that has been fi finally fixed out by now but uh, the gist of it was that low boots are way more compatible than than high boots so we're going to do this so the other thing that we're going to do here let's see so this guy here is pretty much okay he has no assigned items for the uh, footwear so one of a clothing exact matches only confirm so let's see what that does so right now nothing is happening but that's also okay because we we need to reproduce our our gear anyways but uh here, uniform replaces clothing and exact matches only was so far the settings that were pr providing the most uh, successes. So for now, we're just going to wait until the new work orders have been processed and the new gear has been made. So let's see, where, where were we? Where were my smithies here? 
I lost a little bit of the orientation of this uh, fortress, I gotta admit. Ah, here. So here we are at the uh, smithy. So here is now being made, and uh, while this is being fixed up, we're in for some waiting time that we can fill with some other little uh, things like the tavern I was talking about. So we're getting more and more dwarfs in here and the tavern is something you could also well build very very early on in this series. I somehow didn't but uh, well it's happening. When you're explaining every single little step that you're taking, it's really easy to lose track of something. So, the tavern room will be at least 6 on 6. We're going to make it a little bit larger than that, because the tavern will not only be a regular social room, we're also going to have the ability to rent out rooms to other people. So, we're going to make ourselves a couple of apartment rooms in here. So we really need a lot of space. The um, the, the rental part is uh, completely optional. I just want to include it because I think I want to give you the full tour. So we're going to include a door. Speaking about including doors, I noticed uh, a troubling lack of doors. Here we go. And a lack of beds. So what a petition. The Crafts Dwarf Guild wants a guild hall. So, first of all, don't we have one already? It's always the most important thing to uh, look. So, places, locations. We have a Crafts Dwarf Guild hall already. Wonderful. So, the tongues are fortifying. They, they only need more value added to their guild hall. So, we have now one year time to do so. That's going to be no problem at all. It's just a problem not to forget it. So here we go. That's uh, that's the tavern room so far. Let's just wait until they're done. The default settings of uh, of this game are so rich. We're uh, we're digging through through ores for days. I mean, this this entire area is and it's just a pure magnetite chunk, as it seems amazing. So um, here we go. For a tavern, we issue this into a uh, meeting zone, and as you see here, I almost did the same mistake again. We're going to make it like this, of course. There we go. And so, assign this to be a tavern, and now we have opened the granite harvester. So, as you see there, the tavern wants goblets. That's uh, basically everything which is uh, considered a mug or something like that, and it wants instruments. And we can employ a tavern keeper and a performer. The first thing that's also worth mentioning is we have... Uh, wait, no, not the first thing. Another thing. The dance floor here mentioned has to be at least 5 and 5. That's what I wanted to say. But the first thing that I want to say is I'm closing this place down, limited to citizens only, because we're not ready for any outside fun so far. The thing is, when you open up your tavern for everybody, it'll attract... Visitors from the outside world, visitors get drunk, dwarves get drunk, secrets get exchanged, well, raiders come. The usual story. So this way you can change that up. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place down now stockpile zones into my tavern. And uh, the first one will be for drink. So we go there, and uh, where's the food? There's the food, and... There we go. We activate all kinds of drink. And now I go on over here and tell this stockpile zone that it please shall refill its drink from our drink stockpile zone. Here we go. So that's the first thing. Um, what's really important with your drink stockpile zone is uh, don't make it only one tile large because otherwise it will be only filled with an empty barrel most of the time. So if anything, try to make it maybe something like that, depending on the size of your tavern, of course. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a, another stockpile zone, which is dedicated for goblets. Technically a one one tile big zone would be enough, but we're going to make it a little bit larger. So we go on over to finished goods, and here we go. Goblets. We allow all the materials, because I don't want to be picky. 
and we're going to go activate everything here. It's just important that you don't forget to activate qualities and materials because if you don't add all parameters, your dwarfs will have no clue what to put in there. So goblets of any material of it or, or any quality and we can link that up. Where's our crafts dwarf uh, storage? Well, technically you can link that up to the finished goods storage, but I, uh, I don't want to search it right now. So you don't need to link up. They, your dwarfs will eventually get it. So what we did now is we have now a stockpile for food, uh, for for drinks, and for 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 utilities to get drunk. The thing here is, if you want to employ a tavern keeper you will need to add in an extra chest. Either way, you should always add in a chest, because without a chest, there will be no instruments in your uh, in your tavern. Now, that's kind of sad. Here, I want to lose a little, couple of words here for the tavern keeper and the performer. If you don't employ them, your dwarfs will do what they're doing here. They're just going inside there, they're partying hard, they're having fun. The moment you employ a tavern keeper and or performers, there's somebody who's giving them more alcohol than they do actually uh, stomach, and then brawls ensue, and uh, more fun. I mean, the people have more fun, they get more ecstatic and whatnot, but uh, the gist of it is, as long as there's no personnel in the tavern, there's going to be no tavern brawls and nothing, no violence, nothing. If you want to to have the full immers immersive experience go get these and another thing important to note the goblets that are stored here inside the chest only get used by the tavern keeper the goblets that are stored in here or going to be stored in here are used by everybody so that's that's the point why i have all these three stockpile zones so let's add in the last detail and that's how to rent out rooms here so we're going to stack in a couple of beds. I mean, right now it is not really necessary because obviously we don't open our, our tavern to outside people. But uh, I want to show the process, you know. Oh, we have some party going on. Tavern music! So Also, you unlock the tavern music. You don't get it until you have a tavern. So, some closing words. Um... I prefer to make my taverns look uh, beautiful and neat, because that's making your dwarfs always more happy. And the uh, linkage is quite easy. You make a bedroom, and then you go inside the bedroom and you press the plus sign here. This allows you to assign the bedroom to a certain building instead to a certain person. And now we link it to the granite harvester, and now it's a bedroom of the tavern. Job's done. And now you can rent out the uh, these rooms to outside visitors. This is the method how you can actually get non-dwarves as permanent uh, inhabitants and citizens of your into your fortress. This is the first step. First they rent a room, then they hang out, then they petition for citizenship and so on. So it's definitely worth it. So guys, we have a tavern and we ruled out a couple of our problems. So let's get on over to our uh, to our military dwarfs and see what they did there. So as you see, sometimes they just need a nudge. I don't know why the hell is it like it is like that, but uh, nothing has changed except for the fact that I get got in there and clicked the confirm button. This is a very very buggy mess, okay? Your dwarfs aren't the smartest, uh, aren't the brightest candles sometimes. But as you see there, bit by bit they're grabbing their stuff. That's only by increasing the number of available gear and setting up one of a clothing and exact matches only. That really, really does a lot already. So I also noticed that some of my dudes are still wielding copper weapons and that's really, really intolerable. I mean, look at us. We're uh, we're rocking steel, steel bars, so... We're uh, going on over here to the Metalsmith's Forge, and we're casually going to uh, make ourselves some, some steel weaponry here. What that, That's something I do really often when I don't have steel automated for, for in, in, a, in a bigger scale yet. So we make a battle axe, we make a war hammer. Just provide them some quality gear. They'll grab it. 
and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's going to help our military. But on the other hand, as well, we really, really do need more military dwarfs. Four people are just not enough for a fortress of 64 people, so we need to amp up our numbers. So let's get ourselves some extra people. Novice fighter, wonderful. So number six, competent axe dwarf. Yeah, look at those. They bring some uh, talent to the table. So I'm, I'm upping up to all the way to eight now, because the earlier you employ these people, the better. If you don't have competent people, peasants are always a good choice because your peasant is a, a very <clears throat> is a is a dwarf who has not too many specialized talents. So we don't want to make them feel bad here. And uh, what I want to say with that is uh, a soldier lives inside his barracks. And therefore, it really doesn't matter too hard too much if they don't have any talents before they enter. The, the barracks life because they will be learning what they need along the time that they live the barracks life so um, I really like to take untalented people to begin with that's what I'm trying to say because you're not stripping any uh, any any bigger assets from your fortress and uh, military dwarves they are pretty okay with being uh, very monochromatic in their uh, their talents it's okay when they're only good for fighting okay so we have that the fountain situation that i uh that i uh, picked up in the earlier part of the of the video is a little bit more complicated we cannot fix it right now because we just can't empty it anymore that's uh, one one really really important rule for what for all things water this is bad because you have to be able to empty it to access it in some way it's really important although i gotta admit with aquifers it's a little bit harder than usual so what we can do here well not that much but we could set up a proper um, a proper well somewhere around here if we'd really like to so i want to do it for the sake of explanation so what we're doing now is we're going to dig a little bit deeper. It's really not that much of a uh, big deal. So here, get this. The real bothersome part is that we're uh, going to dig ourselves through an aquifer. So that means we have to get ourselves a little bit more, more working space for that. And it's really, really annoying that we have to build walls everywhere, but that's okay. So there we go. And more staircase here. Okay, I'm sealing off these areas here to make sure that we're not going to get flooded or limit the amount of water that's uh, going on in. And now we dig the second layer of the cistern because that's just uh, so really, really necessary. So now we go on here. We want to be, let's say we want this to be our cistern. So now we dig out the lowest level first. Double assign these. All right. And now we dig out the next level. And now you see that we don't have a connection there. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to channel out the floor here. And what's hap what happened here is a wonderful example of the uh, of why you can't let your dwarves work freely. What they did now, they severed the floor here and uh, they can't reach the parts here. That's uh, dwarven ingenuity at its best. So to avoid that, we, we would have uh, been better off to, to do it differently, but uh, you can't fix that by just constructing a piece of floor as a bridge. And as you see there, there's already water filling down there, everything working as intended. And now we, uh, we, we, we do the, the smarter thing. So we go and start with this part here.
So, oh, we're, we got we got uh, goblin thieves. Then we assign these parts here. So, then we go on over here and <laughs> give our dwarves some combat practice. So we select our uh, we go on in here and select our squad. You select the sword icon and then you select the people that you want to see dead and then you confirm and then you hope that your dwarves are smart enough to do so so obviously they already fled with what they got let's see if all yourists are fast enough so they're making a good run for it but obviously it seems yeah the goblins were faster this time but uh so that's how you order your dudes to to run after somebody so fountains so by now we have uh, removed all the floors except for this piece here so we continue now with that oh and there's uh there's now the goblins to fight man they're interrupting our work so uh here's one one snatcher they they these don't come for the monetary value they come for children but obviously they ran into oh yeah so uh <laughs> the kidnappers ran directly into our into our military squad that happened to be right around the corner all right so uh Second wave of goblins got sm uh, got squished by our, our dwarves. So you see, our preparations weren't that bad after all. Brilliant. Good to see. So, there we go. Now we uh, removed the last piece of uh, floor here. And now we can remove that thing to remove that piece here. And now we're done with that part. So it was really important to have the staircase here along the side, as you see there, so we can reach all the levels. And now we have a uh, clear opening. And now we can channel out one piece here. And don't worry, the water will never rise higher than the uh, actual aquifer. So you're safe in that regard. And now we can place the fountain on top of that. There we go. <laughs> we need to make a chain first, though. But uh, that's... Now that that's a cistern that's two tiles deep, and this will be much better than the than the stuff we did before. So uh, let's see, where, where is a chain being made? I gotta admit, I I did derp on that when I did the first uh, fountain uh, thing there, and uh, it ain't that. M a dusting of mud in the water is not killing off your people. It just increases the amount of uh, or or the chances of uh, of infection when wounds get uh, treated with that water. So we're going to search for the chain here. I'm done with you, game. Sometimes it's so hard to find something in this game, and uh, we're just going to make a. Uh, make this a global um, request here that we want to have a certain amount of chain always in our storages just uh, wanted to make one but then i realized that this might be actually not that interesting so what happens now is this will take a while until it fills up because we have a two-story deep cistern in a light aquifer but the fun part here is if we build the uh, fountain now, it will just ignore the empty shaft there and access the water at the deepest part. Right now, this is also muddy water, but the longer this place fills, eventually this place will be all filled up, and then the water will rise up here, and then the mud problematic will be gone. But with a light aquifer, it takes a while until the cistern fills. But the good thing is, that's quite a lot of water. One of these layers is really, really a lot of water, so it takes a while until that's uh, emptied up. And I think that's a pretty good spot to end today's episode, as soon as that chain is finally being made, because I really, really want to... I really want to have that fountain 
So yeah, we gonna be getting into that caravan for the next episode. And I hope you like the uh, fixes we did there. And uh, if you have anything else on your mind, things where you feel like it would be a great idea to to do something about that as well, or certain topics that you want to see featured, I'm really down. Let me know in the comments. So leave me a thumbs up on that video if you enjoyed, and consider subscribing. And there's daily content coming up from my side, so feel free to check that out. Also, there's a link to the playlist of this series down there, so I'd be really, really happy if you'd give it a look. So, have a wonderful day, and see you next time. Bye-bye.